usually we think of diversity as cult like we when we say cultural diversity we think of countries ethnicity race religion sexuality etc right but actually diversity can be within the family itself and as it was for my family my mom and my dad they they could not be more different they were absolutely two polar worlds apart and they were like chalk and cheese from their values to how they brought up to their needs uh, their ways of expression who they are their expectations of life who they want to be and what a good life really means to them it was completely different and even from a religious perspective etc they really were extremely diverse Hi, I'm Yana and you're watching Kiana TV. Today in the studio we have Avni Martin, who is an entrepreneur and a coach trainer with ICF. And we're going to be talking about diversity and inclusion. Avni, let's start with what brought you to Singapore. Actually, my husband uh, wanted to move to Singapore and basically both of us really loved Asia. So both of us were really interested in moving to Singapore. So that's how we came here. But you grew up in the uh... I actually was brought up in India. Okay. So I lived there for 14 years and then we migrated the entire family migrated to UK and then I I did my school, college, university there and met my husband when I was 19 and then we got married around 28. They talk about diversity and then often people think that it should be like an entirely different culture. We talk about diverse cultures for example, where one parent is from country A and the other parent yeah. is from country B. So I know that in your particular case both of your parents are Indians. Yes. And yet you you grew up in what you could say very diverse household. Actually we think of diversity as cult like we when we say cultural diversity we think of countries, ethnicity, race, religion, sexuality etc, right? But actually diversity can be within the family itself and as it was for my family, my mom and my dad, they they could not be more different. They were absolutely two polar worlds apart and they were like chalk and cheese from their values to how they're brought up to their needs uh, their ways of expression who they are their expectations of life who they want to be and what a good life really means to them it was completely different and even from a religious perspective etc they really were extremely diverse so how did it impact you as a child when you were growing up Basically there was a lot of conflict at home because they they could not see um harmony at all between each other and there was um a lot of uh, differences of opinions and how what is right what is wrong what is norm and the way it really impacted me is that it it really made me think of why do people fight and what does it really take for us to be more inclusive and nicer to one another so i feel like the conversation of diversity has a broader tone it's not just about ethnicity race religion etc it really is more about who are we as people and each person is diverse and each person has their own culture and yet i know which is interesting you decided to marry a man who is of a different culture right so my husband is english and i met him at university and for me uh, being brought up in uk and i think if you've been to uk which you certainly have many many times it's such a diverse country uh, everyone is of a different race religion culture creed and so i honestly did not see any kind of difference i just saw i see people for who they are i just see people as people so i fell in love and then we got married but it certainly does bring a lot of um differences and challenges of um family upbringing etc. So why do I know you also have three children, right? Yes. Who are teenagers right now? Yes. So how does it feel then to grow up kids in a household where you come from different cultures as parents? So I think from a cultural perspective, Jeff and I have very much got our own culture. So ultimately culture is a set of norms and rules that we have agreed on. right so we can say that indian culture has a certain norm and we can stereotype that indian culture is different to uh uk culture or singaporean culture and so and so we we can generalize that way saying that certain groups of people have certain rules certain agreements of what is right what is wrong what is norm how to behave what's expected however that also can happen within a couple so so jeff and i have our own culture 
and our kids are brought up within that culture. So within our family, there is a lot of harmony. I'm happy to say that. And it's wonderful to hear. Yeah. And um, so there is not much cultural um, challenges within the family itself. And your children, like when you look at them, so this is the younger generation now, which is growing up. And so if we look at the diversity and inclusion, right, as a subject, how, and of course, I mean, they probably lived a big part of their life in Singapore, which yes. is very inclusive in yeah. many ways. So how are they turning up to be? Yeah, so they go to international schools and they have friends of absolutely every race uh, within themselves. And so whilst we're all brought up in exactly the same culture at home, my kids, because they are of a different generation, they do think differently and they do have different choices in life. When we talk about inclusion, it's more about looking at how can we, as people, look at things from another person's perspective. So here I am sitting on this chair, but how can I see the world from your chair? And why is it important? Some people might say, well, why would they care? I mean, I have my point of view, you have your point of view, why would they care about your point of view? If we just look at the world at the moment, right, the world is in conflict. And I believe that conflicts primarily happen because people have this whole premise that I'm right and you're mm. wrong. Right. So uh, so one of the biggest reasons is I'm right, you're wrong. And the other one is that um, I'm more important than you. Right. And the third one is that I'm going to take some actions around it. I'm actually going to act on the fact that I'm right and I'm more important. So conflicts happen at world scale, but they also happen for many people within families, within communities, within workplaces. And if you look at the heart and soul of absolutely any conflict, it's the fact, it, it, kind of this whole conversation of diversity and inclusion comes into it. It's a fact that we just do not accept differences. So I feel that yes, there is a lot of conversation about diversity and inclusion all over media and everyone's talking about it at workplace. But they are very much looking at it from a very gross macro perspective. Like ticking the boxes? Ticking the boxes. That gross. sounds horrible. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, right? But I think, uh, okay, so, some, uh, so, so somebody may be of a certain race and uh, you um, are inclusive of that race, for example, but what about all the little subtle differences? What about somebody who's exactly the same race as you, but they think differently? Right? They have a different culture. How much do we accept differences within our humanity itself? Little, little differences. And <laughs> this makes me think, I, yeah, I have a friend who is living in New York, and they have two boys who just a few years ago had to you know, enter university. Yeah. And so, so they're young, white boys. Yeah. And I just remember that like a few years ago, we had this conversation with Hyo and they had like straight A at school. They did all the extra curriculum and the parents were really worried if they're going to get into any decent university because mm. they're young, white boys, <laughs> right? And they said it's the worst type of, you know, to be right now because everyone wants to have something different, but not that. Yeah, yeah. So it's sometimes I also feel with all those conversations about diversity and inclusion, it could almost become an opposite. And then we start excluding yes. a certain part. The norm. Which or, is not whatever, even what people think, yeah. Exactly. Okay, yeah. right? So it's a very interesting totally. one comes to yeah. the point of uh, how it's important then just to listen to each other yeah. and actually understand where the pers other person is coming, which has nothing to do like with our color, exactly. religion, exactly. Uh, I don't know, country we are born, and each person is entirely different. Exactly. And I think like you and I, we also had this conversation, like sometimes I, like when people ask me, where are you from? I don't even know what to say. Uh, like, I mean, where I was born, where I grew up, where I lived, right? Yeah, yeah. Where, the country of which I'm citizen of. Yeah. Like, what, like, what exactly are you asking? And Jeff often jokes with me that, hey, Avni, I'm the minority in England. Right? You see? <laughs> it's exactly. like when I go to London and you're in a tube or MRT in London, essentially what you're hearing is every language in the world, but sometimes you often don't hear English. So I feel, you know, it's just important to be inclusive in, uh, um, like My I'm thoughts. all pro rights and giving equal opportunities to everyone, but then we should also remember that we should really not put down people yeah. 
that yeah. haven't done anything wrong to us. Yeah. Right? Just yeah. because historically, a certain group of people, I don't know, was ruling, it yeah. doesn't mean that they, they should not have any chances at all. Like yeah. You can't just erase yeah. an entire part from Earth. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to the day when we start talking about diversity and inclusion from a thought perspective. That somebody doesn't have to be vastly different to us for us to accept them. Exactly. Right? They just have to be a little bit different to us. They may just have a slightly different opinion. And we don't have to be opinionated about, I'm right, you're wrong, etc. We can actually just say, okay, how does the world look like from your perspective? Why do you hold that perspective? Why, why are things the way they are for you? Let me learn from that. And whilst I'm still honoring where I'm sitting, let me see what the world looks like from your perspective. And I feel like our communities, our marriages, our homes, our workplaces, and the world at large will be a much happier place if we can just do that. Absolutely. And I know you have been living in Singapore now many years. Yeah. So how do you feel the situation is with specifically this topic is in Singapore? Yeah. When I first came to Singapore, you can say that I had my biggest cultural shock. Okay, so tell right? me about it. <laughs> I mean, so, and, and I mean culture, not from a perspective of ethnicity, etc., or or um, race or religion, but culture in terms of expat culture, mm -hmm. right? So I'm, I did meet a lot of women when I first came to the country who uh, were expats, they were extremely wealthy, and they were not working. Mm -hmm. And they had a lot of time to um, think about things. And I felt that I, uh, when I first came in, I felt like I felt really, really judged for being me, mm -hmm. right? Completely excluded beyond my wildest imagination. It's a kind of exclusion I had not even experienced at my school. I was just going to say, it sounds like a high school boy. It was, it was. <laughs> and, and, you know, one of the person who was like the main central point of this bullying Okay. Uh, eventually, four years later, she did apologize and she did say that, Avni, I actually took pleasure from hurting you. So it was <laughs> extremely hurtful. And, you know, Yana, I did not expect it. And uh, our kids were friends and our husbands were friends. But from a um, lady's perspective, this one person who was extremely popular in a group decided to exclude me and was very mean to me. And I was younger in those days. And I would definitely say less self-aware. Uh, so whilst, whilst it did hurt me a lot at that time, and I had a lot of sleepless nights as a result of it, it did inspire me to really look into myself as to why? Why does it bother me so much? Why am I so impacted by another person's behavior? Okay, so somebody decides to exclude you. Okay, so somebody decides to be mean to you. Okay, okay, it's intentional. It happens all the time, it actually, does. including in, in workplaces, social places, right? Social I mean, media as well, bullying. all sorts of stuff, online like bullying. have it everywhere. Exactly. So, so what if somebody has done that? What about me? Is it so that it's impacting me so much? So it actually inspired me to go on a very deep journey within myself to really start a journey of who am I, why am I the way I am, right? Uh, what makes me who I am and who can I be? and who do I want to be, and a very deep journey of self-awareness. So that's essentially how I developed to become a coach. I became an inner child integration therapist as part of my own healing process. And I feel that all of us can focus on doing a lot of self-work within us. Again, our own world will be a better place. And of course, any, every single person who interacts with us will be better off. And then the entire world will become a better place. So I am a complete advocate of self-work. Well, a first of all, Avni, thank you for sharing this story. And I mean, I've been living in Singapore for more than 15 years, and this is usually not the story you hear about expat wives. You know, usually the stories are, oh, everything is wonderful, and everyone yeah. loves each other, and there's a lot of inclusivity and diversity. Yeah. So it's interesting that actually, you know, in real life, it's not always the case, and yeah. we can always work on that. Yes. And uh, so, and then at the same time, it's as much as painful it is to go through this kind of experiences. Yeah. As people do say that where our biggest pain is, it's also our biggest power. Exactly. It's really on how to, you know, exactly. turn it around and transform right. it. And it's still painful, but then it does make you who you are today. That's and right. I think today you're in a really great place. Absolutely. <laughs> and we can turn all of our pain into power because essentially our pain is there to tell us that what is it that we really need to look at within ourselves? And today, I sincerely, with all my heart, at every Thanksgiving, 
thank the people that hurt me because I feel like I would have not gone into such a deep journey into myself had that not happened. Every, every experience that's negative, there is something deep that we can learn from it. So, and that's just an opportunity that, opportunity that we always have at our hands. So, so yes, I'm, I'm very, very grateful for all the experiences that I had. And today, like you say, I have an amazing circle of network, you know, a circle of friends, clients who I feel really love me genuinely, authentically, and I feel very happy, you know, and very relaxed and uh, yes, completely a different place now. There is one more sort of aspect here I just would like to highlight. You haven't said it, so I'm just going to, you know, say it for you because I know you and I feel it is very important. When we talk about um, creating something in life, you are a mom of three kids. Yes. And <laughs> you came to Singapore when two of them were very little. Yes. So it's also a challenging time and to your, to your oldest, they're just one year apart. Yeah. And they heard that child psychologists say when children are just one year apart, it's, it's often tougher than they have twins. Yeah. Just with the demands yeah. and everything. So you came here as a trailing spouse, you know, following, you know, the family, having to reinvent yourself while having two small children in your hands yes. and dealing also with this situation, you know, not feeling very yeah. welcomed by other yes. women by any means. So that month has been really, really hard. So I just want to say that, you know, it's important to with women to acknowledge motherhood yes, and how much time it takes, how much energy it takes, and also then how, how much more you need to work on to actually build yourself. Absolutely. I think that is a huge point that you're making because our kids become like our mirrors. So of yes, course. I had all these external challenges, but also just the whole fact that I have kids and, um, you know, kids bring things up within you and it becomes like a mirror to us as to what is it that we need to work on? Like, I don't know any parent who will say that they did not feel extremely challenged because of things that they went through because of their, with their kids, right? You know, there are challenging moments, but in every challenging moment, we have a choice of who do I want to be? How do I want to respond to them? What is really the best way to respond to this challenge, right? And uh, do I automatically respond through my reactions or do I proactively work on what's going to be best for them? And most of the times, so in the beginning, we do react through our normal reactions and that always backfires, doesn't always work out. So then it really is an opportunity for us to look at how do I need to work on myself so that I can become more aware of my reactions and who I need to be to them. So it is definitely having kids is a very deep internal journey as well. As much as we produce, you know, beautiful babies externally, it's such an inward journey. As well. And I also would like to add, because I have been watching like so many women, you know, having one, two, three, you know, I mean, and even if you choose not to have any kids, of course, it's absolutely fine. It's, it's just I do find women who choose to do that. It would be nice to show a little bit an extra kind hand, yes. right? And for the woman also herself, I'm just kind of saying it is to everyone who is right now like a young mother or we have like young babies. And then if you still have this thing that you want to do something in life, like you want to do something professionally, you want to achieve something, patience is the key. So sometimes I feel that some, we start comparing ourselves how far someone else gone yes. somewhere or maybe how much for the husband is doing someone or a, a male friend but it's an entirely different role play when you yes. also have to actually spend your time and energy yeah. on raising other human beings and you want to succeed professionally. So I just want to say here sort of kudos to all the women who yes. are for the <laughs> challenge. And I think also in the workplaces, there should be more inclusion about it. So it's actually easier for working moms to That's do right. what they do because it is a tough place to be. It really is. And, uh, Hats off to all the women who have, you know, uh, raised a family and they're working on their professional lives. Exactly. Yeah. So I want to talk about one thing which I'm curious about. You're writing a book, right? That's right. So yes. can you tell us a bit more about it? So the manuscript is due in a few weeks time. So I'm writing a book for Penguin Publishers and it's about the happy coaching system. So it's H-A-P-B-Y, which stands for habits, actions, perception, purpose, and yourself. And actually the whole happy coaching system has uh, been inspired by my parents. It's a polarity of this, you know, diversity I had within my family itself. 
myself, I felt like, why is there so much conflict? And how can we be happy? What's the root cause of happiness? Which then made me feel like, um, get, got me really inspired to look at many philosophies, neuroscience, etc. And I've been really interested in personal development most of my life. So the happy coaching system is like a synthesis of all of that journey. And so I'm writing a book about that. So it's happy coaching system for organizations, teams, and leaders. I'm looking forward to reading the book thank when it's out. <laughs> yeah, thank so you. Absolutely. And maybe the final question for today. So if you were to look at yourself 20 years ago, and if there was something that you could say to yourself at the time to empower, what would you say? Really, I would say that for each, for, for me, I would say to myself, work on yourself. That's it. You know, work on your internal being. Get to know who you really are and find your internal peace as much as possible. Because people feel that peace is boring. But I think peace is actually power. Right? I think when you are peaceful, you're more present. You can just see everything that's around you and who you need to be, what opportunities you have. And you can respond from your best self from your highest self, from your wisest self. So I would, with all the journeys I've had in my life, I would say that really do a lot of deep inner work within yourself. And you would know that you need to do deep inner work from just the normal situations that show up in life. You know, if anything shows up in life where you feel like, I could have behaved differently, or I could have responded differently, then that's an opportunity to look at, okay, so what caused me not to? And how do I need to? behave differently? And, and how can I? And where is it coming from? So I would really just say work on yourself, most importantly, uh, so that you can be happy and then everyone else is happy as well. It's so interesting that you say that some people might think peace is boring because I definitely thought this way. And now when I look back, actually, I feel maybe especially when you like when you're a teenager is definitely boring. OK, then when you're in your 20s and 30s, I think it could be boring because you want adventure. You want to establish yourself. You want to travel around the world. You want to do, you know, volatile emotions. But then when I watch people and also like my own life journey, I feel by the time you start reaching 40, maybe 45 max, yes. then you really appreciate peace. Yes. <laughs> then yeah. you go, okay, above everything else, I just want a peace of mind. Yes. And yeah. I want to be in a state when I can, re when I can again respond and not react. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and you know, Jana, uh, just as you said in, your, in what you just said, we think that peace means no adventure. In fact, it's the opposite as well. From a state of peace, you can have anything. So think of it that way. Peace. I love that. You know, so peace is just a state of mind. Like today, I feel like I am more peaceful than I've ever been or ever imagined in life. And so from a state of peace, you can choose anything. You can choose adventure and you can choose whoever you want to be, like any aspect of life. You can, you can do it. Right? That's going to be my biggest takeaway, okay? So I feel like, okay, I am peaceful in the way I am right now. So I'm going to just, you know, move in more adventures. You can, from this. If, if that's that what was... you want. Yes, <laughs> whatever you want is available to you from a state of peace. Because from a state of peace, basically, absolutely anything that's around you is available to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And that You're was welcome. Avni Martin. Thank you so much. Thank you, Yana. <laughs> that was Avni on Yana TV with us today. And we talked about diversity, inclusion, children are being a trailing spouse, how the society welcomes and not when you move to a new country, working moms, and of course that peace is the key quality when you can truly live the life that you want. And I would love to hear from you, dear community, in the comments, what do you think about our conversation? Would you like to contribute? It's always wonderful to read what is in your mind. And we are very grateful to Muse Studio for hosting Yana TV. Remember, subscribe to the channel, share this episode with friends, and we're going to see you next time. You <laughs> see? Congratulations. Thank you. You were so nervous and it was so smooth.